So good morning. So today I wanted to talk about the Data Discovery Studio, which is a, a project for cataloging and searching geoscience data um, that we've been working on, Ilya Zazowski, Dave Valentine, myself, and a, a whole cast of thousands over the last five or six years with uh, a couple of different EarthCube projects, building blocks, and, and the most recent is the Data Discovery Studio. So. The point of the Discovery Studio is to be able to find find data, and uh, you know what it looks like is uh, it's we're using the ESRI Esri um, GeoPortal open source project, which is fairly widely used in the community as a as a platform for indexing and searching, and we've harvested currently on the order of uh, I think 1.6 million records or so from a variety of different government agencies and other catalogs um, covering a wide variety of geoscience topics. And the interface is, is uh, might look fairly busy to start with, but it's fairly straightforward. There's just a basic text box. So let's search for, uh, let's see, what about nitrogen? And you can see as I type, um, it's, it's looking for um, auto-completing with things that I might be actually searching for. These are all linked um, with, with uh, URIs from various ontologies, so the semantics are clear. And you run a search and you get a series of search results um, with titles. And there's various things you can do with this. So um, you can go into and look at the, the complete metadata record and get um, whatever information was available in, in the metadata that we harvested to begin with. Um, if it's geolocated, you'll see a map that shows where it's located. In this case, it's a fairly small triangle. You can zoom in and out. So this is somewhere in Massachusetts. The search interface also allows you to search um, via the map. So it uses the extent of what you're seeing and you can also narrow your results with a series of facets that are over here on the side. So um, we have these keywords. One of the important things we've been doing is looking, um, processing the metadata records that we get them and doing some text analytics to map the terminology, the terms we find in the metadata record into a set of ontologies that we've compiled to try to get some better semantic precision on the meaning. And so these AI keywords are the keywords that are derived from those, those uh, ontologies. And so for instance, we can look under here, if I just want to restrict this to things that are nitrogen and have to do with buoys, um, then we have a much narrower set. And you can see that the uh, up here, it shows all the various search criteria that I'm using. You can see how many items are currently selected. Um, there are seven pages you can page through here. If I wanted to see all the records on one page, I can change the number of records that are displayed. Some of the, some of the results have little browse graphics that, allow, that give you some kind of visualization for the data. These are provided from the data users. We don't generate these. So it's, it's whatever we got from the users that shows up here and, and uh, you can see those. Um, so we have a series of facets that allow you to narrow things. If you wanted to remove a facet, you can just exit out up here and uh, go back to the complete collection. So we found 21,000 things that have nitrogen in some way connected with them. One of the other things you can do is um, you can create collections if you wanted to save. So let's say you were, you were searching through here and you had a series of, of hits here. Um, you might want to be, you might be particularly interested in one or more of these. And so what you can do is add it to a collection and then you can go over here and manage your collection. Um, you can save the collection, you can create a new collection, let's call it. Um, in there, and you can export it. It'll export as a CSV file that has a list of the things that you've got in that current collection. Um, in some cases, you might have things that you wanna get rid of. So there was some stuff here before that I don't need. I'm removing those. Um, so this allows you to keep track of, of a set of things that you're interested in that you might want to export and look at and come back later. Um, you can also contribute new records um, through a fairly simple interface here. Um, 
with which asks for pretty minimal metadata. Our, the metadata model we're using in the back end is the ISO 19139 metadata, which is, as anyone's familiar with is a pretty extensive um, set of metadata properties. But for the most part, the ones that we've put in this interface based on looking at what actually gets used, these are sort of the most commonly used fields. Um, so it allows you to contribute um, a data set, a record for a data set, if you think there's something that should be included. Um, there's an about page here, shows you how many records are in. And uh, we have a little widget here, if you wanted to add a link that would let you put this widget on a web page that you're building, um, you could, the code is here, um, HTML that you can just plug straight in to your web page and allow somebody to, to search um, the uh, Data Discovery Studio Index. So one of the questions people ask commonly is, well, okay, uh, how's this different from just searching on Google? And uh, besides having these sort of science specific keywords here, there's a variety of different things that, we're that we've been working on engineering that lets you do things with the data. And uh, along those lines, I'll turn it over to Ilya Zazowski now to discuss that. So I'll stop sharing and turn it over to Ilya's screen. Okay, uh, so let me share my screen now. And uh, I, I want to point out several capabilities of Data Discovery Studio that actually let you work with data rather than just to find data and uh, download it on your machine. And uh, Steve already mentioned, you can organize your data into collections, you can contribute to your own data sets, but you can also do some additional fun things. And uh, actually one question that Steve mentioned is that how it's different from Google. Google needs to index data sets uh, in order to do search. And uh, how would it index it? Uh, it can index web pages, but when it gets to data sets, it would expect these data sets to be coded in some way. And what Data Discovery Studio does, it will code the data sets that it harvests or the data sets that you supplied. So such that Google can find it. So for example, if we go to Google dataset search and uh, uh, look for things such as volcano, you see that Data Discovery Studio is listed quite high up in the list of uh, sources that uh, provide information to Google. So you can uh, click on that and go to your familiar by now uh, data discovery studio user interface. You can search for other things, uh, you know, precipitation. And uh, we understand that people use, and, and here, here it is, data discovery studio right up at the top. So uh, you see that we not only allow you to find data through our catalog, but we also provide data that we harvest from uh, projects and from uh, large uh, government and NSF sources in a way that makes it easier for Google to index and uh, um, they show up right at the top when you do the search. And then you can navigate back to Data Discovery Studio and do some additional interesting things such as, uh, let's go to Data Discovery Studio and uh, I will expand, you know, there's one category here which says metadata collections. And there are multiple collections that we harvest from. Uh, I now hold, um, National Data Buoy Center, we can select any of these stations, doesn't really matter, we can look at it, so we can launch Studio. Studio is the new functionality that is not uh, available elsewhere as far as I know, and it essentially allows you to attach notebooks to any of these uh, 1.6 million data sets that you find in our system. So let's run uh, a notebook, I will choose UCSD Data Science Hub that our own system, but you can also connect to other data. What you see is that a notebook will open and this notebook will know that uh, it has to work with data set with this ID. That ID actually comes from uh, Data Discovery Studio. Once it gets converted and you see how it's been uh, pass. That's like a trick that we do in, in our system where we pass parameters to a data set uh, to, to a notebook. 
uh, and once we know this ID, we can call back to Data Discovery Studio, retrieve the metadata, retrieve the data set, and do something. Uh, so let's see, there's a limited set of operations that you can run. I will choose MDBC Explore. And just to do it quickly, we'll open a specific notebook that will that is tuned to examining data sets that come from MDBC. And you can add your own notebooks. There's actually capability for uh, the system to accept your own notebooks and point to your repo. All right, um, we uh, read a bunch of um, libraries and uh, uh, given um, the ID that was sent to the notebook, we now can go back to GeoPortal and retrieve uh, the metadata. And the metadata says that there are actually a bunch of data sets attached to that buoy. Let's try to grab any of them. Uh, doesn't really matter which one and see what the data set contains. And this data set contains data on um, wind speed, gust wind, uh, water temperature, atmospheric temperature. Uh, we can choose which variable we want to run, let's say water temperature. And now it will give us in real time, I mean, the, uh, the chart of uh, distribution uh, of, you know, the, the chart of water temperature for that year that we selected and I don't really haven't noticed what we selected. Uh, it was apparently historical standard method, uh, yeah, standard meteorological data for 1995. That we happened to select in the first step. Uh, and now we have to get a chart. If we want to do uh, other things, uh, we would just rerun that cell and look at uh, uh, barometric pressure. And that's a chart of barometric pressure. The point here is not that this is like a complete geoscience workflow, but this is a simple way to find your data and immediately do something with this data. And uh, um, you can also send not individual data um, uh, records that you found, but also collections. And this means if you have a model and you want to assemble all model inputs into a collection, then you can launch a notebook that will do um, that that will run the model for that collection of inputs and then you can modify your collection of inputs and run that model again. So what we're trying to do is to make the connection between large scale data discovery and a very extensible system for analyzing data um, much more streamlined so that you can you, you don't have to do it in like in a regular fashion when you find data and download them them and then forget about the system that you work with. Here it's all uh, integrated and uh, we welcome, uh, very much welcome your uh, um, experimentation with this prototype. All right. Thanks.